Hello, my name is Daryl Hill, and I'm the National Sales Manager for Airs in USA, located in Coatesville, Pennsylvania. Today, my presentation is entitled, Safe and Reliable Biogas Blowers. Biogas systems in the United States are an increasing trend, helping to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from methane, to generate electricity, to create pipeline quality gas or compressed natural gas, and to help reduce food waste. There are 240 anaerobic digesters operating on livestock farms with a potential for over 8,000, and about 1,200 operating at wastewater treatment plants with a potential for over 4,000. Safety is a key consideration in the design of a biogas system. Accidents can happen and unfortunately have happened. In Europe, where the biogas market is much more mature than in the United States, the governments of the European Union have enacted regulation on manufacturers that have greatly enhanced the safety and reliability of equipment in gas plants. This presentation will discuss the design aspects of a safer and more reliable biogas blower. Anaerobic digestion systems used to produce biogas present many safety hazards. Biogas is a mixture of various gases including methane, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. Areas of concern for safety include gas releases that are flammable, explosive, or immediately toxic, hydrogen sulfide gas, which can accumulate in the bottom of tanks and other confined spaces, which can kill almost instantaneously. And biogas can accumulate under roofs and ceilings in explosive mixtures. In Europe, the biogas industry is much more mature than in, in the United States. For over 13,000 European biogas stations, more than 800 accidents were found over a 10-year time frame from 2005 through 2014. But most of them were accidents without any serious consequences. However, there were some deaths. All of the identified serious accidents were caused by escaped biogas. And typical accidents were identified as leakage in the storage tank and or distribution network of the biogas, leakage following the completion of work on site storage or distribution of the biogas, accidental release of H2S, water pollution caused by effluent discharge, the presence of dangerous products in the raw material used to produce biogas, and freezing of valves or high pressure inside the digester. Explosions in the United States at biogas or wastewater treatment plants are not all that uncommon. An explosion in 2014 at a Wisconsin manure to energy plant knocked the roof off of one of the digesters. And in the first three years of operation of this plant, pipeline breaks have caused three major manure spills totaling more than 400,000 gallons. In 2012, a similar incident occurred at an Oregon waste to energy plant. A leak of methane from the digester tank blew directly upwind into a burner that was used to flare off excess methane. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Now in Europe, there are safety regulations for both plants and equipment in the biogas industry. ATEX Equipment Directory Directive 949EC covers equipment in an environment that is potentially explosive. It was adopted in July 2003. The EU Machinery Directive requires that machinery manufacturers identify the hazards their products contain and assess the risk these hazards present to users. And in Germany, DVGW is the largest gas and water industry certification body in Europe. The company certifies and monitors gas and water industry products, quality, 
and environmental systems. In the U.S., we have several regulatory agencies that would have standards applicable to the biogas industry. For example, OSHA 1910.146 contains practices and procedures to protect employees from the hazards of entry into a confined space. OSHA 1910.212 describes methods for machine guarding to protect operators from hazards such as rotating parts, flying chips, and sparks. NEC classifies hazardous locations, although the determination of conditions is the responsibility of the owner. The NFPA has standards for fire and explosion prevention in flammable gas piping systems, and NEMA defines enclosure types for various environmental conditions, including that for electric motors. In the U.S., however, there are no regulations, standards, or guidelines for blowers, compressors, or vacuum pumps that are as demanding as those in Europe. So, what could go wrong? A positive displacement blower in a biogas system is a rotating hazard. You have rotating metal parts, such as the impellers and shivs, that could cause a spark and, in the right environment, lead to an explosion. The blower package must be gas tight. This requires proper sealing at all potential leak points. Keep in mind that hydrogen sulfide is heavier than air and will lay in the bottom of a blower sound enclosure that is not properly ventilated. And then you have corrosion. Wet hydrogen sulfide is really quite aggressive, leading to blower rotors that are rusted together and inoperable, and carbon steel silencers with holes. You should not take a positive displacement blower designed for moving air or an inert gas and reapply it for a biogas application. This could potentially lead to disastrous results. Surprisingly, however, in the U.S., Biogas systems designed for air with little or no modifications are being used in landfill gas and biogas applications. The typical PD blower for air service is constructed from a gray cast iron casing and either cast iron or steel rotors. The seals are designed to keep lubricating oil out of the process air, quote, oil free, and this is usually done with a single lip seal. A small amount of air leakage from the process back to atmosphere is not a concern. Usually there is a vent in the bearing chamber. However, this design is not gas tight. Accessories such as the inlet and discharge silencer are constructed from carbon steel as corrosion is not a concern. A safer and more reliable blower has the following significant upgrades. Casing materials are improved from gray cast iron with low strength to a high strength ductile iron. The high strength material will contain an internal gas explosion. The casing seals are improved, they're gas tight, with a factory leak test before shipment. And corrosion protection is always considered with stainless steel materials as appropriate for the inlet and discharge silencer, piping, expansion joints, tubing, and conduits. The biogas blowers found in Europe meet the EU machinery directive as well as ATEX directive for explosive areas. The units are especially designed for the requirements in categories 2 and 3 for dust as well as for gas and certified accordingly. The blower stage is constructed from an upgraded material, from gray cast iron to high strength ductile iron. The tensile strength of this material is increased by a factor of three. The discharge silencer is designed with baffling, not absorption materials, to reduce the noise level. The baffling also acts to prevent sparks from leaving the silencer. The blower stage and discharge silencer are explosion proof to 13 bar gauge and hydrostatically tested to 20 bar gauge with a TUV certificate. 
A properly sized ventilation fan is required for blower packages with sound enclosures. The fan should not cause a spark and the electric motor should be explosion proof rated. The seals. The sealing at the drive shaft is both simple and effective. Here you see two radial lip seals that contain a grease trap. Also note that the drive shaft is protected by a stainless steel shaft sleeve. And then there are three main parts to the blower housing. To prevent leaks, the mating faces contain an o-ring. The main seals are a floating ring type. The sealing chamber and oil bearing chamber are separated by a lip seal. One floating ring is inboard to reduce the gas flow out of the blower. The second floating ring is outboard and again reduces gas that would get past the first ring. The vent chamber is in between the two floating rings and this chamber is piped back to suction via stainless steel tubing. So in summary, the biogas blower stage is significantly upgraded as compared to a standard air blower. The seals are piped back to suction via stainless steel tubing. The oil sight glasses are also upgraded to a stainless steel material. The blower casing material improved from gray cast iron to a high strength ductile iron. The blower is also protected from corrosion by a fluoropolymer coating. And finally, the stage is leak tested and hydrostatically tested. Like the blower stage, you should not take an off-the-shelf catalog silencer designed for air service and put it into a biogas application. The catalog silencer is de not designed for corrosive gas service and certainly could not contain an internal explosion. If the biogas is coming right off the digester tank, you may consider eliminating the inlet silencer and only providing a moisture separator before the blower. A stainless steel discharge silencer is always a good recommendation. Corrosion starts when condensation forms inside the silencer. Now this won't happen if the blower operates continuously since the high discharge temperature keeps the vapor above its dew point. However, continuous operation is usually not a reality, and unless you want to purge the system with clean nitrogen upon shutdown, the stainless steel silencer is recommended. Also, a condensate drain should be provided. Instrumentation should be designed for the electrical area classification as well as for the environment. Stainless steel materials should be used for tubing and wire braiding. Now unfortunately, at a biogas or landfill gas plant in the U.S., you might see a blower package like the one pictured here. There is no consideration for noise, no inlet or discharge silencer, and no sound enclosure. There is no consideration for explosions, as you can see standard electric motor and wiring. There is no consideration for corrosion, as standard carbon steel materials are present, and you can also see the start of corrosion. And unfortunately, no concern for the safety of personnel. However, there are alternatives. Unfortunately, tragedy leads to the adoption of better standards and regulations. In Europe, equipment manufacturers are required to look at all the risk and all the consequences of potential failures in their design. In the U.S., the lawyers get to decide if safe was safe enough. The design of a biogas blower package should take into account safety, explosions and fires, as well as asphyx asphyxiation from small amounts of H2S, to reliability where the corrosive effects from the gas can stop a blower in less than six months. Safer and more reliable biogas blowers are available on the market today. Thank you for your time and attention. Okay, thank you, Daryl, for that very informative presentation. And we have some questions that have come in from our attendees, but before we get to them, I'd like to remind everyone, if we don't get a chance to answer your question today, don't worry, someone from Arizona will get back to you in a timely manner. Okay, Daryl, let's take a look at those questions, shall we? The first questioner asks, 
How is safety designed into a blower system? Safety is designed into a blower system by carefully considering everything that could possibly go wrong with the equipment in the application that may represent risk to personnel. For a positive displacement air blower, we know the risks are pretty minimal. However, with biogas, everything is new, and the assumptions you make with an air blower cannot be made with a biogas blower. Okay, Daryl, thanks for that answer. Let's take a look at another question. What components should you look for in a well-designed biogas blower? A well-designed biogas blower will look different than a blower designed for air since the dangers from fire, explosion, and asphyxiation are now present. I would look specifically at the blower stage. Did the manufacturer make any design changes in consideration of the possibility of a fire, explosion, or asphyxiation? Okay, Daryl, thanks very much for that answer. We've got time for another question. Let's take a look, shall we? What's the biggest challenge in the design of a biogas system? I'd say the biggest challenge is deciding, number one, what the area classification should be. That is, should it be explosion-proof or non-explosion proof area? And two, should we use the more expensive stainless steel materials for corrosion instead of carbon steel. Both decisions impact the cost of the project and may also impact the safety of the installation. 